All right. Well, it is very cold up here in the Midwest in the United States. There's a wind chill factor of below zero. But let's see if I can warm up to a nice warm operating system called Manjaro Linux. Now, this is by request. I had received a couple of requests to take a look at Manjaro Linux based off of Arch. Now, Arch Linux by default the traditional Arch Linux desktop is definitely not for newbies. Manjaro Linux is something new. I think it came out last year and it's according to their website this is designed for both newbies and advanced users. It is a rolling release distribution distribution meaning that you never have to reinstall this every couple years or less or more. It just updates, everything is bleeding edge more or less, and you're good to go. The problem with rolling releases, they are bleeding edge, meaning sometimes they are over the edge and they can crash your system. Now I think the developers, the developers of Manjaro use uh, separate stable uh, repositories to prevent or to lessen the impact of something or a few items being unstable. But that being said, let's take a look at the install process at this and see if it is truly newbie friendly. I am running this inside a virtual box with Ubuntu Unity as the host. So let's take a look and see what we got. All right, boot Manjaro Linux, hit enter. All right, this is the welcome screen. By the way, there are different desktop environment, environments or different variations of Manjaro. This is the XFCE version. Now it says here, welcome to Manjaro. You can get more information at manjaro.org. And it says, I apparently I have an, a notification. Your virtual machine is currently running the guest editions 424. Since you are running a version of the guest provided by the you installed in the virtual machine, we recommend that you update it. Oh, okay, I guess there was another version of Guest Editions. Well, thank you very much, Manjaro. I did not know that. Let me get escape out of that. All right, as I stated, it says, Welcome to Manjaro. The default user password is Manjaro, and the root default password is Manjaro. Okay, good enough. Let's go to uh, full screen. Okay, looks better. Well, this is the default desktop for... Manjaro. Now before, if you are completely new to this, I highly recommend it looks like there is a beginner user guide already installed. I highly recommend this if you are completely new to this. Okay? All right, well, let's look at the installation process and see just how friendly that it, this is. Now this says Manjaro CLI installer. By nature, a CLI installer or a terminal command or a command line interface by nature is not really newbie friendly. It may be user friendly, but not necessarily newbie friendly. But let's take a look and see what we have. Let's click that. Okay, let's run through this together if you would like to get your hands dirty as a newbie. Welcome to the Manjaro Linux installation framework, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it says our stable installer is known to work, but don't get new features added. Uh, with our testing installer, you have new features like EFI and so on and so forth. So apparently there are two versions. Die, let's see. Let's pick, okay, let's pick stable. You twisted my arm. Use stable installer. Welcome to the stable Manjaro Linux CLI installer. Now, if you are a complete newbie and don't know what this means, don't worry about it. Just follow along with me and let's see if we can safely install this together. Enter. Set date and time. UTC is fine. America. And we'll just stick with New York time. Okay, that's good. Enter. Okay, the time looks good. Enter. Disk preparation. Okay. I recommend that 
you install this, if you if you were going to try this, install this on, install this on a machine that has nothing on it or has something on it that you are never going to use again, such as erase the entire disk. I do not recommend that you install this or attempt to install this as a dual boot alongside Windows 7. It's easy to mess up. It's easy to somewhat break something and if you reboot you won't be able to boot into any operating system. So once again I recommend if you want to try this try this on the machine, maybe an older machine that you no longer wish to use the current operating system on it. I choose option number one, erase erases the whole disk. Okay now it's going to go through partitioning, boot partition, swap of root. Once again, if you don't know what this means, it's okay. It's not that critical for the purpose of this installation tutorial. And I am going, I'm hit, I am entering and following strictly the default options. Now it does ask, uh, this will be whatever is on. If I had a previous operating system on this portion of the hard drive, it will be it will be completely erased. Now this is a virtual box. I have nothing on it. Either way, if I did or not, and you want to erase it, that's fine. Just highlight yes, enter, and it will go through the partitioning process. You could also do custom partitioning, but honestly, as a newbie, never, ever, ever do custom partitioning unless you know exactly what you are doing. Okay, preparation finished. Enter. Main menu. Install system. Please wait. Okay, I'm back. It says installation succeeded. Yay! Enter. And it's doing a little bit more configuring. I think we are almost done with this. So far so good. No crashes or anything unusual. I believe the download of this was about oh, 900 megabytes. Not too bad. Okay, we are now to step number four, configure system. Enter. Okay, I'll, again, I'm going through the default from top to bottom, change root password. Let's keep it simple. Three digits. Three digits. Okay, set up user account. Enter. Um... Yeah, let's just keep it at Manjaro. Like yes. Enter password. Again. Okay, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that's really all you need to do. There are some optional things to do here, but for newbies, no, don't go there. So I will highlight back. Okay, we were almost done. Let's see, install bootloader. Okay, we are going to install Grub because it says you have an option of Grub or none. If you know what you are doing, choose none. Well, you are a newbie and you don't know what you're doing, so obviously choose Grub too. If you don't know what that means, Grub Unified Bootloader, trust me, just highlight only, only that one. And verify it, yes installing Grub2. Grub2 successfully installed. Okay, now we are done. Installation finished. Yay! Alright, let's do this. Let's go ahead and shut this down. Shut down. Let's see if it boots up without any crashes. We'll see if we install this correctly, being that we are newbies.
Well, it appears that we did. Didn't crash. It booted up. Well, this concludes the installation part portion of Manjaro Linux XFCE. Now, once again, if you're going to try this, do not try, do not attempt to install this as a dual boot alongside your Windows PC. You can, it's easy to make a mistake and you may not, and you may not be able to boot into anything. If you are, if you are going to erase everything on the drive, on the hard drive, which is the recommended way, I think you'll be fine. Is the, is the installer newbie friendly? I'm, I'm not too sure about that. I would have to say no. Is it user friendly? Yeah, I think so. I think probably even a newbie with maybe a little bit of help, especially if you read the help guide, uh, could probably get you started. The installation, it's not as easy as a graphical user interface install that comes from the Ubuntu family, such as Ubuntu, Lubuntu, Xubuntu, and so on and so forth. And um, part two, we will take a look at the Manjaro Linux desktop.